R, 1100R front tire change. 17 millimeter. Eight millimeter hex. Remove the two caliper mounting screws from each of the two calipers. You're going to lift the caliper away from the mounting tabs and then rock it on the disc to expand the pads in the caliper. You're not going to bend the brake disc, you're not that strong. Lift the caliper out and out of the way. Same on the other side. Now you need a six millimeter Allen. You do not have to remove these. I remove them so that they can be cleaned and recoated with copper anti seize. These can corrode and break off when you go to loosen them. So, therefore, copper anti seize to prevent such foolishness from happening. Support the wheel. There is a spacer on this side. It is thin. It does not need grease. It's just a spacer. On the other side, here we have the speedometer drive. Pay attention to how it is oriented, how the cable is oriented down. Notice that it has two bumps on the drive unit. These two bumps straddle a tab. On the fork leg here. To properly position the speedometer drive with the cable pointing slightly downwards so it has a nice gradual curve. Remove your wheel. I'm going to begin by constructing a box of two by fours. Loose, does not need to be nailed together. There are side cutters. If you have new tire valves, and you know for sure they are the proper ones for your rims, you can go ahead and cut the tire valve off. Otherwise, use a tool and remove the core. Lay your tire down so the discs are not on the wood, just the edges of the rim. You're going to use two pieces of wood. Stick it right in the edge of the rim on the tire. These are broken. soap and water around the rim, put your knees into the tire to push it into the valley.
Remove the rest of your old tire valve. New tire valve. I'm going to remove the cap. Give it a little squirt of soap and water mix. Put it through. Take your tool. You know how these work, right? Put it on here. Turn your tire valve. Put thread into the tool. Just a little bit. Maybe a turn, turn and a half. And push down. It will snap into place. You're going to straighten out your tool, bend the valve a little bit, and unscrew it. Come on! That's some jerky. Put a little more soap on the rim. Take our wet rag. Your new tires, unless they are Michelin, will most likely have a dot somewhere on the tire. That dot is to go next to your tire valve. Why? Because that dot is the heaviest point of the tire, and the hole drilled in the rim where the tire valve goes is the lightest part of the rim. If you put the red dot next to the tire valve, you will often not need to rebalance your wheels if they were properly balanced before. So we're going to position our tire valve at my 12 o'clock and keep the dot at 12 o'clock. We go around and put a little bit of soap on the bead. I'm going to run my fingers over it. Then I'm going to go this way on that portion of the bead, and I'm not done. I'm going to go underneath this side as well. Same on the other side. Tire valve at 12 o'clock, our red dot at 12 o'clock. I'm going to slam it on in this direction. Kaboom! Remember that cereal? Yeah. Kaboom? I do. Circus fucking circus thing on the box. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Weird name for cereal. Kaboom! <laughs> oh, the noisiness. Maybe it'll just do it with a compressor. Sometimes you're lucky. Sometimes you don't. Contact.
Horizontal, torque the axle to 30 newton meters. Torque the calipers to 30 newton meters. These pinch bolts are torqued to 20 newton meters. Pump up your front brake. Hard, apply some pressure to it. Release, now give it a spin. This is normal. Our tire valve is at 12 o'clock. We'll get to about nine o'clock. How much rotation can you expect from a front wheel? R1100R. We'll place our valve at your 12 o'clock position and I will give it a spin. Three, two, one. Puts you in about the seven o'clock position. Try that again. Three, putting it back to 12 o'clock. Three, two, one. We made it to about 8.30. This is normal. I just put new brake pads in this. They work. 